Hi, welcome to another session of basic electrical and electronics engineering. We were dealing with DC machines in the last class, uh, that is before um, magnetic circuits, that is we are treating the DC machines as class 1. So in today's class we are going to see a simple loop operation of DC generator, means how this exactly sine wave is generated when a coil which is placed between north and south, it is changing its position from B to C, C to D and D to A and how this coil is rotating in the magnetic field. So that is what we are going to see in this class. So in the last class, uh, let us revise what we have seen is the construction details of DC machine. Uh, also we have dealt with EMF equation. Then we also see in the direction of the currents which is framed in this particular four pole machine in this way and what is uh, Fleming's right hand rule and Fleming's left hand rule in order to obtain the directions of the voltages and currents in generators and motors we have seen in the last class and the EMF equation which is generated is given by pi p and z by 16 to a also when you are going to look at the basic construction details you are seen about the yoke the field windings which are placed on the poles and these poles are protecting the field windings with the help of pole shoes then the direction of the current which is flowing in the four pole machine the shaft which is center of the entire construction the armature which is placed between the poles and the shaft in between armature and shaft you have commutator and the brush contacts where you are going to collect the current and the entire frame is kept on a stand so this is what we have seen in the construction details of DC machine now exactly the working principle of DC generator or DC machine uh, which becomes a DC generator when it converts the mechanical energy to the electrical energy now according to the Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction if the conductors placed in the armature are rotated externally in the magnetic field that is produced by the field windings, an EMF is induced in it. Now, this EMF causes a current to flow which is alternating in nature. It is converted into unidirectional current by the help of commutator. And the induced EMF in the generator is given by E is equal to pi P and Z by 16 to A. This derivation we have seen in the previous class. Now P stands for number of poles. Uh, Z stands for the, the number of the conductors placed in the slots of the machine. And E is the induced voltage. So when you see about a simple loop generator, take a north and south poles as shown by this bar magnets and the field is assumed to be flowing between these two magnets so we are assuming that the field is flowing from this magnet to this magnet and a coil is placed in this fashion and the rotation it is assumed to be clockwise so the north and south are the magnets coil is placed in between the magnets and the coils are named as a b c d such that A, B is parallel to north and south as well as C and D is parallel to north and south. Uh, so Y and Y dash stands for the axis of rotation. So this is the simple loop generator operating principle we are going to start off with. So figure A shows this simple loop generator. So we are considering a single turn A, B, C, D conductor which is placed in the main field created by magnetic north and magnetic south. So, as shown in this figure 1, the magnitude of EMF induced at any instant of time is proportional to the rate of change of flux linking the coil at that instant of time. So, this is given by Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. This direction is obtained by Fleming's right hand rule, what we have seen in the previous class. So, the direction of the induced voltage in generator is given by Fleming's right hand rule. So, in position of figure 1a, coil ABCD is parallel to phase of poles and north and south thus flux linking with the loop is maximum but the rate of change of flux linkage is zero have you understood this point this a b and c d are parallel to the phases of poles north and south 
So here, the flux linking with the loop is maximum. So the flux linking with the loop P, loop means ABCD loop is maximum, but there is no rate of change of flux cutting. So the coils are not cutting the flux lines. They are going to start cutting the flux lines once we start the rotation. So once the rotation is started, as coil starts rotating in clockwise direction, its signs, that is the coil signs, begin to cut the main field gradually at increasing rate. Thus, the magnitude of the induced EMF increases and becomes maximum when the loop reaches to the position as shown in figure 1b. So this is figure 1b. You can see the A, B, C, D coil is completely perpendicular to faces of north and south and at this position means what we have assumed the previous position as 0 and from 0 to 90 this is how the coil position it, it is obtained when we are assuming the rotation to be in clockwise hence from 0 to 90 degrees that is 0 to 5 by 2 the emf induced follows the increasing sign law so if at all you take this voltage on y axis and time on x axis and uh, the coil it is rotating from its zero position to 90 degrees so this is how it is going to increase so this is the increasing sine wave now from zero to 90 degrees the sine wave it is increasing and at 90 degrees it is reaching to its maximum position in this figure B, the direction of the EMF induced in the coil is from B to A and B to C. I hope you understood this particular concept. What we have seen? We have seen that the coil is perpendicular to the north and south faces. And the sine wave has increased from 0 to 90 degrees. The direction of the EMF induced in the coil is from B to A and B to C. So here the flux linkage is cut by the coil, and that is up to maximum condition at 90 degrees it has reached. Now, same north and south, the main field flux is going from north to south, the coil is placed and it is going to decrease from 90 degrees to 180 degrees. The coil position it, now it would be A, B, C, B. So under the axis of rotation y y dash from figure C. So in the second quadrant, the coil cutting the magnetic field gradually decreases causing the magnitude of the EMF induced to fall gradually and becomes becoming zero. Thus, ABCD coil becoming parallel to the faces of poles north and south as shown in figure C. So, when in figure 1, A, B position is on the top, PC position was at the bottom. Now, the same position is reached but in the opposite direction. So, if it all be C in the second quadrant operation, from 90 degrees to 180 degrees, the EMF induced is reducing and it is reducing to 180 degrees. So, hence from 90 to 180 degrees, EMF induced follows a sign law which is decreasing from 90 to 180 degrees. So, in first quadrant and in second quadrant, the positive way of sine wave is obtained. Now, again, when the coil is going to cut the flux lines in this position, AB, CD. Now, AB is perpendicular to north, CD is perpendicular to south. Hence, the maximum rate of change of flux is cut and EMF is induced. So, the rate at which the conductor cuts the magnetic field and EMF gradually increases as the loop moves and becoming becomes maximum at that instant as shown in this position which is shown in figure 1D. The EMF induced follows again increasing sine law but in the negative direction. 
So if at all I take the positive wave where we have seen in the second quadrant, the EMF induced it has reached to the zero at pi degrees or pi radians. From this position, when again the coil is cutting the flux lines and it is reached to this position, so at 3 pi by 2 radians, the sine wave it is assumed to be flowing in this direction and it is increasing up to the instant 3 pi by 2 or 270 degrees. So this is how the sine wave is obtained till this instant that is at 270 degrees or 3 pi by 2 degrees when the coil positions are quite opposite to the figure which is shown in figure 1b. Now what happens? Now again from 270 to 360 the EMF induced or the sine wave it is gradually decreasing on the negative side. So what is going to happen? Here the direction of the EMF induced in the coil is from A to B and C to D that is quite opposite to what we have seen in figure 1b and as I was stating from 3 pi by 2 to 360 degrees again the position of the coil is is obtained as is, has been started from the figure 1. So this we are going to treat at as figure 1e the same figure which is uh, shown in figure 1a. So that is in the fourth quadrant the EMF induced decreases as the coil moves and becomes 0 when it completes 2 pi radians or 360 degrees from the starting instant. So which is shown in this figure 1e quite similar to figure 1a. So at this instant the loop comes to its absolute origin position and hence the loop is set to complete it one cycle. So one cycle means we have started from figure 1a and we have reached to figure 1e so one cycle is over. So this sequence keeps on repeating for each revolution of the armature as shown in figure 1e with the help of this sine wave diagrams you can see here from 0 to pi for the first half it has increased to the 90 degrees and it has come to the 0 at pi radians again from pi to 2 pi it has increased till 3 pi by 2 and it has gone decreased to 2 pi so the emf it is increased in this fashion on the positive half and it is decrease and increase at the negative half and come back to the original position. So this we treat as one cycle. So this sequence keeps on repeating for each revolution of the armature. So if at all you have, uh, this is a simple loop generator and we have single coil uh, and it is assumed to uh, rotate between the north and south with the help of external agent, the coil positions are changed and the EMF is induced in the coil and that EMF induced is obtained by P is equal to 5 P and Z by 60 into A. So this is the operation of simple loop generator. I hope you like this particular video. Uh, please uh, share among your friends and subscribe to this channel and press the bell icon for the future